This ordinary looking council estate near Crystal Palace conceals an extraordinary secret. Hidden beneath this block of flats is the Cold War bunker from where Southeast London, right up until the 1990s, would have been governed during a nuclear war. If this red light had ever come on for real, an incoming nuclear attack would have been about to hit the capital. The speed of the missiles would only have left time for Londoners to be given a four-minute warning. Here is an emergency announcement. An air attack is approaching this country now. Go to shelter or take cover at once. The attack never came, of course, and when the Cold War ended in the early 1990s, Britain's entire network of civil defence bunkers, built from the early 1950s onwards, were shut or sold off by the government as an unnecessary expense. Today, as once top secret official documents begin to be released under the 50-year disclosure rule, the extraordinary story of how government prepared for a nuclear attack on London can at last be told. Within months of the Soviet Union's first explosion of an atom bomb in 1949, it was concluded that it was impractical and far too expensive to provide nuclear shelters for the general public. Government, on the other hand, was to be protected at all costs. According to architect Roger Morgan, Formerly secret plans show that an underground network of tunnels links Whitehall to a series of nuclear bunkers half a mile away. Tracing the line of the tunnels at street level, it's possible to find evidence of what's below, if you know what you're looking for. To Roger Morgan, this curious structure en route is a telltale sign, a ventilation shaft from the labyrinth below. I mean, it's amazing that the public are walking past this site, which, you know, is part of a, a secret government tunnels and bunker system designed to withstand nuclear war, and they're completely oblivious of the fact that beneath their feet is this secret world. The Whitehall tunnels end below the former Department of the Environment buildings in Marsham Street, which are due for demolition this summer. Now that plans of the secret government war headquarters in the rotundas beneath have been released under the 50-year rule, filming permission has been granted for the very first time. The plans that I've been able to obtain of these bunkers from the Public Record Office show their internal layout quite clearly. They are constructed in the pits of former gasometers and the government utilised any handy holes in which to construct their bunkers and two gasometer pits were uh, very suitable. So the main two bunkers are circular, they're three stories deep, uh, the roofs are 12 feet thick, the walls are 8 feet thick, there are something like a thousand rooms, two miles of corridors, uh, accommodation for 2,000 people, and their own artesian well, completely self-contained power supply, and uh, it was held that it could button down for three weeks in the event of uh, an atomic attack. The country was split up into a number of regions and there were regional war rooms, the idea being that some at least would survive. The uh, rotundas are the central collecting point for all the communications for the whole regional war rooms uh, network. So there would have been a large staff of civil defence personnel maintaining contact between all the various war rooms and relaying orders to the regional commissioners.
In order to try to govern a city as large as London after an atomic attack, the capital was split into four sectors, each with its own war room with communication links to the Marsham Street headquarters. The four bunkers were built at ground level, without windows and of extra thick reinforced concrete. Eight miles out from the city centre, they would have been beyond the blast zone of an atom bomb dropped on central London. Astonishingly, this house in Chislehurst, now on sale for three million pounds, was once one of those bunkers. It's been recently converted by property developer Richard Clark. The first time I ever came here was through this door here. There was an inch thick steel plate door, like a submarine door. Um, obviously we put a window in here now because you don't waste a, a good hole in the wall in this building. Um, but the idea was if it did, uh, if we had this nuclear bomb going off, it, it, if it blew through one door, it couldn't get along this corridor with these, I think they're about four foot thick here, the walls, down through the next section and it had exactly the same again where you're standing, um, another submarine blast door of an inch thick steel plate. This is actually the only original corridor left in the bunker with all the original rooms off it. We have the water storage room here, the same opening same height. We have the entrance to the control room here through the original entrance, concrete walls again. And this is the shower room um, that would have been used but now is a really luxurious bathroom. There we have it, uh, quite an improvement from the old showers um, now to a sexy bathroom complete with a rubber ceiling. 